Most of the questions about the Eurozone today, which I get, are framed by reference to default. So, so the questions are this, will Spain or will Greece default on its debt? And what I say is you're asking the wrong question. The question is not whether they'll default, because I can't answer that any better than you can, and currently the markets are pricing in a 50% chance of Greek default within five years, or something like that. The question seems to me to be that there is a quadrant of choices, four choices, if you're Greece. Not default, that means you spend a great deal of your future GDP and taxes on paying back loans at very high interest rates, extremely painful. It can be done, but it won't be fun living in Greece. Default, all the consequences that brings, probably control of much of your banking system and certainly quite a lot of your sovereign lending by the ECB. But there are two other choices. Not default, but leave the Eurozone. Now, you could do that. That's different because that would reduce the real value of your debt that you owe, international value by the extent that you would devalue your currency, probably 50% in the case of Greece, that sort of number, halve the value. And you'd also get back to work because all of a sudden Greece would become a relatively low-cost tourist destination. All the ships and the shipping and all the things they do well would all of a sudden be good value again and they'd be off again. So you could, so it's not default, it's default stay in the Eurozone, leave the Eurozone, not default, and the fourth quadrant is default and leave the Eurozone. So there are four choices, not two. And what's interesting is when I hear these things talked about, I hear only two choices. I hear default, not default, and the not default is usually associated with a bailout because things are so bad. But the other two choices are available. It's just that politically, they're still not sufficiently acceptable as a concept to be mentioned in official circles. They're mentioned in what are called journalistic and analyst circles, but not in official ones. So there's probably some what you might call pre-discounting opportunities for investors who wish to protect themselves against the consequences of a Eurozone departure to invest in those instruments now, and then when the world comes to the view that that might happen indeed, if it does happen, they will become very valuable. That's, if you like, work in progress at record in the thing we call the Euro Protection Fund.